nation before the debate starts. They ponder on their inner beliefs and deep within their hearts. They are all different species that roam an evolving earth. Without a sovereign leader to rule over them from birth, the debate is about to open to choose their king or queen. So let us listen with respect as we observe this unique scene. and I am and wise in my own right. I go to bed with angels but I don't get up with the lark for I always tend to enjoy the day when I am in the dark. I am a bird of prey and for fun I always try to mock the birds of any other kind that doesn't belong to my own flock. Whether it be frightless or the bald-headed coot. As a member of my own species, I don't give a hoot. People always ask which came first, the chicken or the egg. But since we're evolved from dinosaurs, there is no broken leg. For we roamed this earth for years, well before the dawn of man. And since it was prehistoric, it was before this world began. If all finished or craziness, the fact remains the same. We, all, we alone ruled this world, albeit under a different name. For we, have, for we were here before you in the empathy mist of time before mankind was even thought of and before mankind's first crime. Man believes that we have created, but wouldn't it be odd if God hadn't, 
created a man, but that man had created God. I am a philosopher, but I am a man of letters, and I was taught from the nest to always respect my betters. As an owl, I am wise, but I cannot begin to understand why a bully like an ostrich always buries his head in sand. For you will never gain wisdom in the sweet, in the sweat by and by. And if you don't have any wisdom, you will never learn to fly. Universities were created by the wisdom of men, but St. Paul's was des des designed by a person called Christopher Wren. And the world was travelled over in a clipper by a drake. But when will man begin to understand these facts for heaven's sake? I will finish with a flurry in the lapwings of our outer space. For, for, for though we are all different, we still belong to the same race. And the wisdom of the owl that you may see when, within your dreams is nothing but an apparatum upon the flowing screams. Poets and the lovers world, the nightingale will now be heard. People must wonder what a nightingale was doing singing in a noisy city. So I'm going to tell you. I'm an Albanian bird, and our singing, day and night, in our lovely woods and mountains, is much appreciated by humans there. We males sing chiefly to attract a mate. The adventurers among us migrate to Norfolk in England each summer, a place very different from our native land. Flat, with great open skies where a bird can improve speed and tactics. If we try to convey how joyous our foreign visit is, we're all called irresponsible, and I am being boastful. I admit it. I am proud of my good voice. All nightingales sing beautifully. But not all please the girls as much as I do. There's a story in England of a nightingale who sang late at night in the centre of London in something called Barclay Square. It's not thought to be true in either England or Albania. But when I sing all night in the city, it will be. Off tomorrow. London is not far away. And this little bird, who belongs to the flycatchers and nests humbly on the ground, hardly bigger than a robin, and with the same colouring, except that it is his tail that is red. <coughs> He returned to something. Oh, sorry, I'm... He returned to his forest dwelling with something new to boast about. Even the elders had to admit it was an achievement, but they said he wasn't serious enough to represent his breed at the meeting being found for all breeds of birds with the aim of ending fighting and hunger in the hope of lowering the death rate. Our insouciant little traveller approved of all this and reflected that nightingales were lucky. Insect eaters didn't have to depend on either birds or humans to be able to feed themselves and their families. No wonder they sing their happiness. And who is this? The bold young pro. Tell us, Corbyn, what you know. Thank you. 
Thank you. I am the protector, so true. I am the crow. I am here for the show. I have my wings and such beautiful things. I am pecking at your floor on your chamber door. You can see my wings. Please do not follow. Please do not follow me tomorrow. Do please do not be full of sorrow. Do not have. I will. I will return tomorrow. All the angels are here tonight, and we are here for the fight. Everything has now come and gone. Everything is now done. And out of sight, please do not weep. I need to go and sleep. You can only remember my face. I leave no trace. Another crow, the daddy of all. How well we know this rumors. The talks begin, the hapless tweet, the rancid blitz, <laughs> conference of the birds, they call it. The wise owl goes to him and proclaims his feet the wool of feather dove, but he knows not. Who will say? Listen to me. I will vote it down, too long it beat, they say. Don't you last quill, they say. So it went on about vows, about quests and love, about understanding and independence. The sparrows were flapping and the harrows were clacking to a right old jig. Trees full of empty heads, looking for waddy. I tried to tell them, feed your bellies while you can. They'll be back to lay the forest of begging beaks to provide for. They won't care for you with games. Shut, Shut up, you little fool! I said to save myself for now, oh, it. I were young once, eh, just like this lot, like a lot before, all chasing the same paradise. My own was an Oopoo then, him with a long beak and even longer yarns. It was on his word, I took off with the rest of them. The skies were flapping thunder clouds. Some dropped me fright. Some went high. Caught a good lift. Maybe they were the first to see the light. Whatever that was. All looking for the same answers in the same valleys. And all they rush to find out what they were. There was a lot of death. Big birds out in front drawing fledgling feathered fools over water and desert. By the time they caught up, the bullish ones would be off again, leaving them stranded. <laughs> we lost count of valleys. Some had names like quest and love, mystery and detachment, unity and bewilderment, poverty and nothing. Only 30 of us made it after a journey I'll never forget. I was looking forward to meeting the Simon bird of the ideal summer. The big surprise was there was no such thing. It turned out it was us all along. I lost my first quill there and then. But it won't be <coughs> some of us with some plenty ruffled feathers. The hawks were looking shifty. And I didn't feel safe among them. We were all hungry. Wasted journey, I said. A few cocked their heads and twisted the gizzards. We've lost a lot to get here, I said. Who we were, what we knew. I felt hollow inside. What happens now? We gloat. Some said, we go back home. Some said, to what? Some said, we won't get back, look at us, we found nothing here we didn't have before. I tried to peck the eyes out of the reflection in the lake to jack up and still feel. I were dead to all around me. There were no gladness like we were promised, no, no new beginning. It's fine to be thinking, dreaming, 
You might say, but you don't live in thinking and dreaming. You don't live in the sky. You live in the dirt like everything else. You feed on grubs and seed and rotting flesh and you nest in cracks and muddy holes. I know what you're thinking. How did we get back? Well, I weren't so sure we did. In the scheme of things, we were worse than before, just as if our old minds had gone to a place beyond reach. We were different, that's for sure. The whole affair had purified our lives back to newly cracked cheeks. We took grip and scavenge and gained direction all over again. Even then, some said, we may go back, we must pass on the word. I left the word behind and put what little memory I had left of the things I could touch and feel and taste. So you see me now, older than my years, at another comfort. Annihilation would be a better word for it. I got pet for saying my piece and now it's up to them. If I've learned anything at all, I've learned that living is what counts. The next mouthful is what counts. The eggs in your nest is what counts. The year. The noun. That's your paradise. Ah! <laughs> the takes many forms. It's clear. And here's a voice from the streets. Let's stop it here. The crow is alive and well. Not just a bird, I can tell. Late night brings trouble. In New York City, the place that never sleeps. Even the poor watch on the side street door. The gangs are targeted by revenge one by one. The crow spit sings from the cemetery to the bed. One person is back to get his revenge. The, sh the crow is the power that brings the blood off the, off the street. For the, for, the, for the now, the crow is alive. And nobody else will die. With the crow at his side, the angels are back tonight. The gifted linguist, Heracles, he speaks all bird and human tongues. A feathered friend. There are so many beautiful birds in our world, bringing happiness every day. Some more than others enrich our lives. One springs to mind, however, I must say. It belongs to a friend of mine, <coughs> almost family, it seems. A beautiful parrot, everyone loves, could answer someone's dreams. I'm told this has just happened. When a friend had called to say she had heard the news of the wonderful parrot and she would love to see this bird, her wish was to be granted. My friend took it to reveal her treasure, but she gave her words of warning do not touch or you say goodbye to her pleasure. But her pleas were ignored. Instead, she took the bird in the cage, then screamed, Ouch! A pet in two place. Her dream had then turned rage, but shock and surprise took over. As the parrot said, Are you all right? <laughs> and we all couldn't stop laughing. Who cared? It never made an eye. I am wiser than the apple, 
Though even a lot better be said, for he seems to have a fixation that's stuck steadfast in his head, that he alone is wiser than Solomon in his time. But when it comes to talking, the ass can only buy. In my coat of reds and greens, I always hide in full view the portrait of a phantom, albeit with a different hue. I talk like a joker, as I always tend to talk in jest, for I am the voice of caution upon a dead man's chest. You may see me in passing like a blink before your eyes. I'm not a shocking old bird, I'm just a nice surprise. My nest is small and lonely and I live a simple life. I'm wished by the humans and I have a dozen wives. I've seen upon a forgotten coin a farthing on this. And I play daily politics as I would not playing chess. I am the runts of the birds that everyone will know. If evils are the ceiling, then I must be the floor. But people love to see me every now and then. I am your faithful servant. I am the humble rain. The hungry spur on a hungry planet. <coughs> Fishes look out. Here comes the gannet. <laughs> The gannet. That evening, I watched a single gannet feet high, higher, quartz wings, pumice sky, pale sea, 
She grazed crests, grey crucifix. What does she need with camouflage? Rose again, hung on a target of muscle and fin, deep into the plunge. When I knew it was too late, she unhinged her shoulders, snapped her wings back. A spurt, the sea closed over. She rose again. What science did she apply that I would recognize? Propulsion, wind speed, water resistance. Did she account for refraction of light, confounding distance? This one thing that she is built to do to perfection, or down. I control for words. I can haul them in by the crown and not find that exact one. But then my life does not hang upon it. <coughs> the scarlet breast and legs so thin, the perky robin flutters in. by Glyn Holden. I have grafted all this April morning with a hawthorn stump, the final stubborn remnant of a blighted tree. All around the ground lies broken, churned as if by mortar blast, a muddy pit, extraneous rootstock and much more work to do. As if to supervise the process, a robin lights upon a fence post, stands like a hero on a column, red heart burning off the pale spring light. Plough followers, it is said, more interested in unearthed bugs than me. But I believe they're sent to keep a watch and grass us up to God. Even with my back turned, I can sense the beady little spy. I could chase him off, but who could? It might only serve to signal my own guilt. While robins are around acting out their own interest, it's necessary to be on one's best behaviour. Another robin, the gardener's friend, to cheer the year that nears its end. Robin could call in through the snow. Through the cold ice, biting, whipping snow, comes a robin, calling to the wind and blow. A tiny snap of red in the depth of winter row comes to bring hope and joy to all. That tiny brave bird of legendary tales, with all of his heart and his hope prevails, bringing light and life and love to all, hesitant, all knowing, bright and friend to all. My eyes catch, chance to catch his gaze, and to glimpse his timid yet inquisitive face, and to treasure those tiny bottle dappled feathers, surveying them with crimson cries. He is your hope when all is lost, and all seems bleak and stone. In the midst of winter and colder autumn days, for want of food he comes out to play. He is the missing link to my past. My father's confidant and pal, whilst at home in his beloved garden, a messenger from way beyond. Robin's galore. Now here's a pair, both male and female, I do declare. Required hard whistle, you come to take seed, head cocked and stubby. Breast as red as a first blush, brown ring wings wrapping you, each move a readiness. As poison as a high diver, you come to my feet, ready to run or fly. Such a big life in that heart, like a thousand drums beating all my concerns. 
like a switched off light. You're gone, making the world small. Brown arms wrap me colder. <coughs> she repeated it, head cocked, quizzical, as if she wore shiny, shiny suit, comparing her drive. The worm, fresh turned, dragged her beak to the ground, but the mud, massive mouths must be fulfilled. When they were young, they met and courted in the dance of trees. He offered her the juiciest of marvels, and she, <coughs> a slight of seed and perfect, well-bred he. For love with these prettiest of birds, to all that perfect love can ever be. He cocks around, red-breasted, Christmas bird, in his short sign shiny suit, adoring her drab. The meals are torn, wriggling like a fat stone, her lifted, earth to mouth, all parents skilled. The poet, with feathers inky black, now mounts the stage with his clickety clack. Boy, bye. He which hath no stomach to this flight, let him depart. There is much ado and far to go, and wit to woo, for peril looms ever close. Elements so natural shall be his foe. Tread soft on wind that carries hope and despair in equal measure, more like to rend as redeem. Place all esteem in brotherhood. For single vanity shall often weaken the hearty soul. There shall be no simple strike to glory, no chosen path to wend and weave. Tragedy shall pursue each turn, and enlightenment shall be as fraught and vacuous as a siren call to oblivion. Yet, no call to freedom could be better sought that in one constellation of hearts, beating a force so overwhelming, the stars would still in admiration. Beg, this stalwart resolve shall claim its own light. Only this light shall soften the shadows to come, and they will come. See, brother, die before you and say, I saw him die and was unafraid. Few shall witness the end of this epic odyssey, yet all that do shall prosper by its conclusion. The mystery shall echo in the ears of doubtful minds. Have no doubt in thine. Gird thy pelt and seize the fray. Get thee hence and be done. Mr. Dodo, the last remaining of his race. He had determination written like stone across his face. But he was old and decrepit, and he had failing health, as he suddenly collapsed and became as dead as himself. Place the tears that your eyes may cry. So feel free to refresh yourselves, but don't wander too far. I mean, as we take a short break, sorry about that, and we may even join you in a coffee and a penguin missing. <laughs> this is the rather short sighted last eagle in England by Rodriesco. I am the last eagle in England. From my sky throne, I survey my kingdom. Every morning I rise to greet the sun as it 
blazes, gold to buy gold. We know which of us is in charge. I hold the sun's disc, tiny like a jewel in the black glass of my eye. All day I quarter the fells, riding the air currents. The four winds serve me. I hardly need to shift my great feathered sail, the fringe banner of my imperial majesty. When it pleases me, I swoop, skimming grass and boulders, chasing the terrified mountain hare. He lopes, he drinks and drives, he is an artful dodger, but I have the laws of motion on my side. Of course I do, I am the law, like Mr. Johnson. One final drop, bang on target, a scream, a taste of fur <coughs> and hot blood. Then I rise, the lip package that dangle from my talons. Back to my eerie, my mate and the hungry chicks. Except, of course, there aren't any. My last mate disappeared a decade ago. Fierce and faithful, she has merited her place in Valhalla. The chicks, who knows? In Scotland, maybe? The Shetlands? Norway? Good places all for eagles. But I remain in this poor, benighted England, the scrag end of a continent of mountains. Somebody has to look after the place. And who knows, another mate may appear, winging her way from the true north, my help lead and reward. And yet there is a fate that is more powerful than the winged emperor. In my dark, pulsing heart, I know that one day I will set off on my patrol and never return to my palace on these rocky heights. The people below, ant-like, with their goggling binoculars, will see my distant T-shape, too grand for mere kite or buzzard, rowing away towards the east, high over Shap and the motorway, all that crawling life heading towards the great North Sea. And no more. However many times they return to Riggendale with their zoom lenses and their tripods, they have absolutely no idea, these two-legged mortals who are slowly poisoning my world. But I shall be reunited with her, my golden bride, my fate, my faith. Valhalla! Valhalla! You might have thought the eagle had gone, but it is his brother. The king lives on. The Eagle by Kennedy. I reign in my own domain like a giant among the fools. I am the lord of the manor where the law of nature rules. I hover as a shadow that is floating like a dream before I swoop at speed, for I am a killing machine. My talons dig deep and the prey is held secure. The rabbits are quite common here, but no, there is one fewer. I will fly back to my eerie to waiting mouths to feed, for in all aspects of nature there remains a certain need. The blood drips from my talons and ends in dreams left untold, for I am a <coughs> fallen angel that retains a heart of gold. Between and betwixt become two symbols that remain far behind. A contradiction in life that is so very hard to find. I am majestic to the heathens that wander upon this earth. They realize my value, for they know what I am worth. The mountains are my home, they are the pastures where I dwell. I am the guardian of heaven, outside the gates of hell. My eyes are always searching, ever looking for food. I have to <coughs> feed my stomach, and I have to feed my brood. I am the king, sat on a mountain top where angels never tread. My prayers are set in targets. They have become the living dead. The sun may shine above me, but the clouds lie down below. I am the king of the castle that no one can overthrow. I shy away from no one. I'm a bullet left alone. A solitary figure on a solitary throne. My eyes are magnifiers, much more powerful than man. <coughs> I spot my prey from 
miles away, as only eagles can. I pinpoint my home domain that echoes beneath my feet. I am the only king of birds that you can ever eat. The election is now looming, so make your decision now. For amongst the birds of power, I remain the sacred cow. Don't look towards us, sweet and nice, for they become my prey. And the eagle must remain as king on this election day. If they're all warriors fit your bill, then listen to one who's fit to kill. <laughs> come on now, come on, you can see me. I'm the big guy throwing shadows down on your tree. Yeah, that's me. You hear the jive from the fancy bird? Well, let me lay it down. Don't believe a bird, please. Now, I say, don't go. He'll poke your eye and say, go fly. I say, Baba, you're going to die. He said he knows the truth. Truth is, there ain't no proof. He said he walked the walk. Truth is, he don't even squawk the squawk. Time out for every dude to draw his seed and slay his food. There ain't no need for fancy talk. We got the walk, we got the moon, we got the nest to feed our own. Where we come from is all we need to know. There ain't no cat nowhere runs a better show. So peel your eyes and strut your down. Right here is where the true life is found. Yeah. Let's escape from blood and gore. With two birds questing on field and shore. Live fed grassland, tender as new leaf, fitted together by dry stone walls, line after line studded grey, white and purple, marking out the lie of the land, moorlands, ochre, sienna, umber, then ochre all over again, as clouds chase each other from a starting line over the Irish Sea, from the scrub red grass. Close by the swallows dodge fence lines and rich tires. Lambs, black faced, white faced, stray, form gangs, flee for their mothers, tails trembling. At first, I don't recognize the curves. Brown smudges nudging across the field. On a signal, I don't hear, they rise. A single form. Then Sackick, Proboski speaks, browsing the grass, browsing of the lambs and the ewes. Their paws tremble like candle flames exposed to uncertain currents. The curlew's call, drawing breath from every good thing in this upland valley. I hear it later, when the moon is up. The curlew's call, feeding the night breeze when even owls are silent. A single note of salt marsh and tide, a chevron, black and white, a red beak plying the riverbed, for the swale is low. Oyster catcher, migrants, immigrants, refugee, asylum seeker, Alien, the words we use for those who don't belong, choose according to the whim of our welcome. Meanwhile, the curlew, the curlew and the oyster catcher feed side by side. Oyster catcher pipes, swear them offers itself to an unexpected guest. The humble dog, brown and grey, We'll now hop in to join our play. Come on, a bit. No rest. The Dunner by Margaret Simpson. Was that the Dunner? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was spring. The garden was full of sun, song, and seedlings, and everyone should have been happy. But the small birds were all a twitter. They could not agree on who should nest where, and they fretted all day long. All except Dunnock, who hid herself away <coughs> under the leaves of the holly bush. Blackbird 
who was admired by all for his orange grill and for holding his drinking spots at the pond, even when Magpie flew down, said, Why don't you choose a leader? A leader would settle your arguments. Well, Blackbird's suggestion set up an even greater twittering as each bird sought to convince her neighbour <coughs> that she was best fitted for the role. Of course I should be leader, Pipe Robin. Look at my regal red waistcoat. And I can defend my territory, he added, puffing up his breast feathers. But surely mine is the more striking plumage, chirruped Chaffinch. And I'm not afraid of the flightless one who lives behind the bricks. But it's not my blue crown the more striking, though, green blue tint. Likewise, great tint, fluffing up his yellow breast and thick black stripe. The sparrows, who loved an argument, squabbled and jiggled and wriggled in the branches of the apple tree and sent down a shower of blossom. Donna, with her crown of grey, cocked her head to one side and listened. You should hold the competition, said Blackbird. Let the winner be your leader. Now the sparrows loved the competition. They jiggled and squabbled even harder. And everyone knew that at the base of the apple tree, deep underground, where only roots dare to venture, live Worm. Worm was the longest, the oldest, and the wildest invertebrate ever to inhabit the garden. Let your leader be she, or he, who can catch a worm, said Blackbird. Now all the birds jumped to him down with excitement, even those whose taste was not for slimy invertebrates. All they needed was a rain beat that drew the worm to the surface. They watched the sky and waited. Dunnock, with her crown of grey and cloak of brown, also waited. The next day, the clouds gathered and drops began to fall. Sure enough, it was not long before Worm bumped his head up through the soil. Quick as a flash, Great Tit sprang upon him, but Worm slid back beneath the soil, leaving Great Tit with an empty beak snapping. Likewise, Blue Tit, Chaffinch, fared a little better. Beak full of worm, he tugged. An inch slid up. Worm took back, the inch slid back, back and forth, back and forth, until Robin, in a fluster of impatience, muscled in. What none of the birds knew was that Worm had wrapped his tail around apple tree's roots. He was anchored fast. Robin, Talked and talked and talked and sat down on his bottom. All the other birds pointed and laughed and go forward and their sides were shaking with laughter. Donna, with her crown of grey, throat of grey, a cloak of brown washed, while Worm, quick as a snake charmer's coil, disappeared back below the soil. Robin snapped his feet in rage and flew up to the elder bush. Worm, great in length, but short in memory, couldn't help himself, feeling the earth shiver beneath Robin's feet and thinking, rain! He wriggled back to the surface. Donna seized her chance. She darted out, grasped Worm with her little baby and pulled. Worm slid out, smooth as spaghetti. The birds 
still clutching their bellies, saw not a thing except the dunnock's little grey tail disappearing beneath holly bush, followed by the thrashing tail of worm. Now, who do you think would be the best leader? The dunnock. The noble swan. Stately and tall, with gleaming feathers, delights us all. Yeah. You got three steps drawn at one. You got three steps drawn at one. The first is the word, the second is the tune, the third is the song. You got three steps drawn at one. Beyond circumstances that I couldn't see, I waited two days when you come to me. A long a male swan, floating upon circumstance oceans, tides of emotions, gales of the sun. Long a male swan, been long and too long. Beyond circumstances that he cannot see, a long a male swan swims arrogantly. A swan on the water, the wage carries the water. Same lady swan who was waiting for me. On circumstance oceans, tides of emotions, soft breeze of the sun. Long the male swan, been long and too long. And you got three steps strolled in the long. You got three steps strolled in the long. The first is the word, the second is the tune, the third is the sun. You got three steps strolled in the long. The golden pigeon, the common bird, still has a story to be heard. Last Stand, The Golden Pigeon by Carol Wynn. Amidst the shops and the cafes and the grey pavement flags, under murky slate autumn afternoon skies, amidst a maelstrom of autumn leaves, and swirl stands a lonely bolted pigeon on his last legs, unfettered and unattached and all alone with a piece of a lovely Greg's cheese onion pasta. As the pigeon contemplates what to do with his treasure, and he twirls the thing round with his tiny ravaged toe, and the world moves around him in slow motion, cold winds blowing. But the pasty remains, the pigeon's bouncing, on the ground, untouched, a delicious morsel, an illust a lustrous fragment of Bolton, a pigeon life. Before he can reach with poised beak for the prize, a feathered friend very quickly joins him for a snack and a tea break and possibly a fight. It's that time of day for it, and it's that time of year for it, as late autumn falls and the dull twilight arrives in Bolton Town Centre again. Amidst approaching flopping cronies, the feathered one coos to the skies to himself, to anyone who can hear him, and he is answered by a cluster of feathers in his face. A gathering of flapping, pecking and dust, a tussle of pastry, yank, and it all falls to the floor. Alas, a savoury morsel no more. <laughs> Another picture of golden tough swags in to strong that stuff. <laughs> Oh, yes. I want to be a pigeon. Free and bold as brass. Strutting. So cocksure. Swaggering and bragging. Preening my fine feathers. Shouting, look at me. With an I don't care attitude. Arrogant and smart. Supercilious. A survivor. Soaring above danger. Escaping all boundaries. <sighs> Flying free and unfettered. Oh yes, I want to be a pigeon. 
black and white, day and night, the magpie now hops into sight. After you appeared, Mum, bobbing up and down on the fence, watchful, never still, prepared for fight or flight, you liked a fight, always a feisty bird. My father was a sailor. He lived in the past and sang songs in pubs. He soared like a gull over the ocean, but grounded to be with you, his beautiful ebony eyes. Lost in your beauty, obsessed, self-regarding in the glass. Good morning, I call out for you, but you're always alone now, one for sorrow. A rare bird now, for many a year. Cool cranks here to have her say. I apologise in advance for the corn crake's call. <laughs> this is corn crake by Breeze Brandon. <coughs> I am a corn crake. I have flown from sub Saharan Africa, where I spent the winter, to the Isle of Lewis. I'm a shy bird. I build my nest in tall grass, camouflaged by my markings of black and brown and cream. Alas, camouflage is no protection against modern farming methods, and my species has been forced to leave the places they saw as home. My ancestors spent the months from April to September in Ireland. But we've been pushed to the western extremities of the British Isles and our numbers have declined dramatically. My quest is for survival. I remember you. I remember you on the summer evenings of my youth. Sky bright in the afterglow of sunset air redolent of flowers and mown grass across the meadow a haunting call Rex Rex I too was compelled to leave my home and I missed your cry my quest is to hear that evocative call once more Exploited through the years by men. Let's hear it for the mother hen. Pretty strong. In my hygienic cage, you broke me. No, you break them, my sons and daughters. These go to make meringues, the white work to peak so daintily that the yolk you discard, nonchalantly, cook they are, fragile and crisp. Others are fried, poached, scrambled, boiled, all eaten. So indifferent then. Add my sons to an omelet. Add whatever you want, herbs I never smell. My daughters go for a Victorian sponge, lighter than mine. You are a masterpiece. Your sugar puddings you have perfected to accompany what was once a cabin. Chew the cup, enjoy the sun, feel the wind. From my hygienic cell, I'll tell you all this, and I should you consider these were once mine, such a dogs. Thank you. She was a dear old sweet hen, who would lay eggs now and again, and on the morning she would go onto the soil heap, and she would crow. But all the other hens would say, <laughs> It's only roosters that greet the day with flapping wings and doodle who. So, it's not the thing for you to do. Don't let the side down or be a smarty. It's all girls together. Hey, let's have a party. So, it's jolly this and jolly that. Who's afraid of the farmyard cat? It will run with its tail twixt its legs. But don't let it get to the eggs. 
For if it does, it's a preamble. Watch out! For the eggs will scramble. Don't let's all get in a huddle. For then, all our eggs may all coddle. But, if we do get in a mix, well, we can all have eggs benedict. Busy bird with rainbow vest. The starling thinks that he's the best. Because all the other birds were made first, we got the spare parts, the leftovers. Every year you will 
you'll hear about a bird that could be an eagle that perches like a statue in the branches of a pear tree. The tinsel chimes of hidden crimes where magic once did roam. The minstar pies, the twinkling eyes that fill a happy home. There are 184 birds given in 12 days, but there are only 12 partridges. So, what do these facts say? That a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, and for a partridge in a pear tree, there will never be a rush. So, vote for my species. After all, David Cassidy was once a member of the Partridge family. The penguin was now invading. The Emperor waddles on the sea. Today, the rookery was frozen with awe. Why is Kensal arriving? Large turnip was sure. Silence now deafening. As we stand in the crowd, his stature majestic, his presence so loud. No intro is needed, he lowers his wings. The crowd sits in unison, like puppets on a string. We have learned over time to spread wings without flight, adapt and survive in our environment's flight. We support each other through thick and through thin, one family, one motto, acceptance of kin. A nod of approval from all of the throng, flapping of wings in such a beautiful song. Over the years we've shown family above. No need to perform, as others say we should. Molds have been broken, spirits have woken. There's nothing to prove, love is our token. This unconventional root at the heart of us all provides courage to others who cannot conform. All of to approval from all of the throng. Flapping of wings, such a beautiful song. Beautiful song. We all know as penguins how great was the task. Created as birds, yet changing one's tack. Forever rounded, mocked and offended. Feathers no longer but wax like plumage. Mm -hmm. Slow nods of approval from all of the throng. He rises. No flapping of wings, a silence so strong. He rises with passion, head and wings high. Atmosphere pregnant with heavy delight. It has come to my knowledge. That it has been said. What shall we do if our home becomes dead? If the great two legs decide not to care, will we adapt? Should we be scared? Eyes gazing downwards, an uneasy throb. No flapping of wings, no beautiful song. Remember, my friends, new water we drank, a sea full of salt, no river to thank, sending our bodies off out of kilter. Kidneys and nose changed into filters. Wide eyes, beaks open, a statue like throng. Slight movement of wings, a whisper of song. Dearest Kevin, as we close for today, believe in thoughts in a positive way. <coughs> negative rumours, negative chatter. Never bring peace on subjects that matter. Let us rise to our feet. Hold our wings high, fly high in your spirit, and reach for the sky. A parade of penguins, a clapping frog, clapping of wings, such a positive song. <laughs> well, you've met them all, the beak and the brave, and even the dodo that we could not save. The election is nigh, so let's keep the faith, and elect the leader for the speech that they gave. Now with bated breath, we do silently wait to see which of the birds will enter the gate that leads to the throne sooner or late. For each species lives by both chance and by fates. Messenger, we need a messenger. The messenger will bring this Hat of fate, whoops, to one of you, but not the crown. 
and one of you will draw out an egg with the winning name. A swan. A swan. A swan. A swan got all. Well, as I was going to say, in the real world, we've been inundated by elections and referendums. Yes. <laughs> and so, in the realm of fantasy, just for a laugh, no. we ask that you take a deep swallow and join in the fun. We won't rush the election as there is no need to be swift about it. We won't embarrass you or cause you to get goosebumps. So don't go swanning off. <laughs> By doing the choice of leader this way, we won't be robbing any of the birds of being the leader. You need not crane your necks to see which species is on the winning ticket, as it has been announced to you. Mr. Swan. We have our new leader. Can you be outstanding, Mr. Swan? Thank you very much. Come to the front of the stage. Come on. Who's possible? Who's Wish that you would all have a safe journey back home. Yeah. 